Okay, so here today, which is a melancholy, I think I think this is a film that absolutely deserves the word dramedy, co-written and directed by Billy Crystal, who stars as an aging comedy writer working for a popular TV show, keeping from the world and from his family the fact that he has the, 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 the beginnings of dementia. One day he goes to lunch with somebody who has bought a lunch with him as a prize, you know, so they've, they've, they've paid money to charity as a prize. He gets there. Finds out that his his lunch mate is Tiffany Haddish's Emma. She's a free spirit and a busker. Doesn't seem to know who he is. Here's a clip. I am so flattered that somebody your age would be a fan of my work. Truth? Sure. I don't know who the hell you are. My ex bit on you. Uh, how did this... He was doing a scene from one of your plays in his acting class, and he really wanted to meet you, so he bit. How much? Twenty-two. $2,200? That's fantastic. $2,200, my ass. $22. Twenty-two dollars was the winning bid. Mm, it started at twenty, and then it went up in fifty cent increments. So she then gets an allergic reaction to seafood. He takes her to the hospital. They become friends. Um, she gets him to talk about what's happening: the fact that he's losing his memory, the fact that he's trying to write a memoir uh, that is dedicated to his wife, whom he lost, and. He then introduces her to the members of his family who don't know about his condition, but they just suspect the worst of her. If we, okay, if we are to be kind, I would say that the best stuff about the movie is at the beginning, the odd couple stuff with Billy Crystal and Tiffany Ash, because they, you know, they are both funny. They are, they are both capable of, uh, you know, of, of being funny on screen, and that's the very best stuff. Then, and actually, there's some quite nice stuff about the fact that he's an aging comedy writer, but he's not really, you know, he's not really doing anything on the show anymore other than being sort of a talisman of what is real comedy. The more it goes on, however, the more it just descends into utterly mawkish sentimentality until it finally ends up in this pile of treacly sludge, you know, a sunset, which is. <sighs> The fact that it has celebrity cameos from the likes of Sharon Stone and Kevin Klein just adds to the overall air of loveliness. And it was funny because I remember saying when we were talking about Supernova that one of the things I liked about Supernova was that it, you know, it had comedy. It had a sense that when you're talking about you know, Alzheimer's or dementia, that it, 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 the, the form of dementia that's that's being invoked here is a very specific form of dementia. But the thing that I liked about Supernova was that it, it had the laughter. It had the, because anyone who has had any experience of dementia knows that it's not a monolithic thing. And in the case of this, I kept thinking, well, why is this so different to Supernova? And the answer is because this is mawkish and indulgent. And the more it goes on, the more mawkish and indulgent it unfortunately becomes. It's clearly a very personal project. I said, you know, written, directed by and starring but it just loses its way very badly. And the final, the final scene is just like, really? Oh, for heaven's sake. 